Hey guys, and welcome back to another beautiful day today in Norway. In this week's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new GoPro 11 and comparing it to the GoPro 10 from last year, as well as a GoPro 8 from a couple of years ago to help you decide which camera is the best for you. But before we get into some of the major differences, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the footage that I've captured already on the GoPro 11 and see how it looks. Here we go. And we'll just call that our test for the day, I think. Okay, so what is different from the GoPro Hero 10 to the brand new Hero 11? Well, physically, they're basically the exact same camera, and that's actually a really good thing because that means any mounts or lenses or ND filters or batteries or accessories you have from a Hero 9 or 10 will continue to work on your Hero 11, and that's great news. But what's really impressive is on the inside of the new camera because we now have a new sensor, and it is huge. I mean, technically it's only slightly bigger, but it brings some really significant improvements. Additionally, we now have 10-bit color and a couple new shooting modes that we're gonna talk about later in the video. But first, let's dive into this new sensor and talk about why it's so important and see if it's really a big enough upgrade from the Hero 10 to justify buying the new Hero 11. Let's check it out. proper comparison of the cameras, I figured using an FPV quad would work really well. So I'm using an iFlight Chimera 7 with a dual GoPro mount and it's weighing about 1650 grams. Right off the bat, you can clearly see that the GoPro 11 does in fact have that bigger 8x7 aspect ratio, and that is giving us a little bit larger vertical field of view. Additionally, it does seem like the GoPro 11 has a little bit better dynamic range and some more details, especially when we zoom into the shot as we see here. Now as we fly, honestly, both images look extremely good, and I wouldn't really say one camera is that much better than the other, but you can still see that there is definitely some more dynamic range in the clouds and in the trees off in the distance. However, after I do a basic color grade, they seem more or less the same, and honestly, if you're using this on YouTube, you would have a really hard time telling them apart. So for this test, I have both cameras set to basic auto settings. I'm using auto shutter, auto white balance, setting the ISO from 1 to 400. And we're kind of letting the camera do its thing because that's how a lot of people use these cameras. So as we turn around here, you're going to notice a pretty intense lens flare on the GoPro 11. And this seems to be a pretty common problem with this camera. At the end of the video, I'll show you how I was able to fix it on my camera in case you're also having a similar issue. But first, let's talk about something a little bit more interesting. It's almost 2023 and Hyperview is the new Superview. Plus, we'll look at some in-camera stabilization and see how it performs on bumpy terrain. Hey guys, so this is a test of Superview versus the brand new Hyperview on the GoPro 11. Right now, I'm running down the road. So there's probably a little bit of shakes, but the stabilization should be doing its job. Now I'm going to run up the hill. It's always good to get exercise on these reviews. So here we go. The sun over here is pretty intense, but I'm about to come into a shadow and we'll see how the cameras both adjust for that. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so now I'm standing in a shadow and we'll see how the cameras react to that. Okay, so for this next test, we're gonna be taking a look at Hypersmooth on the two cameras to see how they compare and perform. And to do these tests, we're gonna be hopping into our ATV here and taking a little bumpy road ride. Here we go. stabilization, specifically real steady stabilization. Now, if you're not familiar with real steady, it's essentially an aftermarket program that not only stabilizes the footage, but stretches the image and removes that fisheye look that's pretty common with GoPros. By doing this, you get this amazing flow and this incredible sense of speed, and it really works well on certain clips, especially when you're shooting straight down a road or flying through the trees. 
Uh, if you're doing a lot of freestyle, it's maybe not actually going to work so well for you. But anything cinematic, you definitely have to try Real Steady if you have not. Now you can see there's not a huge field of view difference when using a standard 16 by 9 aspect ratio with the GoPro 10 versus the GoPro 11. You're getting a little bit of extra field of view, but it's not a game changer. The real advantage of the GoPro 11's new sensor is vertical cropping. So these clips here are just standard, unstabilized, regular, right out of the camera, 4x3 aspect ratio for GoPro 10 and 8x7 for the GoPro 11. Now you can see here in Final Cut Pro, in order to get a 9x16 vertical crop, I have to scale up 238%. On the new GoPro 11, I only have to scale up 204%, which is 15% less. Now this is really important because you're not only maintaining resolution, but you're maintaining field of view. So what we're looking at here is just raw, unstabilized footage out of the two GoPros. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to stop right here and say I don't really love the auto white balance. It really gives this yellow green tint. So I'm just going to do a quick color correction here so we can move on and have some okay looking footage. Anyway, so here we go, we're scrooting around and you can see that the field of view is quite a bit larger on the GoPro 11 and you're really getting a much more immersive experience. But what happens when we vertically crop a standard 16x9 real steady clip? Well, that's what we're looking at here. And actually you can see there's not that big of a difference. Of course the GoPro 11 does have a tiny bit more vertical field of view on the top and bottom, but it's pretty negligible. And actually as the real steady program works, depending on the amount of stabilization, you actually almost have no advantage when using the GoPro 11. However, there is actually a better way to do this. Now I'm gonna click in here and I'm gonna show you the real steady app for a minute. And right here you can see that it comes up in a standard 16 by nine crop, but you can choose all these different options now and we're going to choose the 9 by 16 which is the popular vertical crop that everyone uses on social media and we're going to export it and just fling it right out i'm going to go through this in more depth in a different video but this is just kind of a quick overcap into what we're doing so now boom we have real steady applied and you can see here that the gopro 11 has a massive field of view difference it's so much nicer to look at because you're really seeing more of the scene. And when you're trying to create an immersive experience for somebody holding a phone vertically, maintaining field of view is extremely important. Now, if you are familiar with Real Study and currently use it, you should know that there is an updated version that you have to download because it gives you many more output options. I'm gonna to have to do an entirely different video just to talk about Real Study specifically. So we tested the GoPro Hero 10 versus the new 11 and saw that there's not a huge difference with the exception of the increased vertical field from the new sensor. But what if you have a GoPro 8? Is it worth upgrading now to the GoPro 11 or should you just keep using the GoPro 8 because it works perfectly fine? So to do that, let's go ahead and just take a look at the footage and see what it looks like. testing out SuperView on the GoPro 8 and the new Hyperview on the GoPro 11. How does it look? Is the Hyperview looking more warped or distorted? Is it getting more perspective, giving you a better field of view, more immersive experience? That's what we're trying to figure out here between the two cameras. Uh, we're going to go ahead and step out of the car now. I have HyperSmooth on, so it should be a little gentle. Okay, so that's interesting. Both cameras are on auto exposure, okay? Seems like the GoPro 11 is doing a better job. Okay, so right here, the GoPro 11 has 360 degree uh, horizon lock. 
so I can spin the whole camera around and boom there we are GoPro 8 does not have any sort of horizon stabilization so if that's something you want then you probably would want to upgrade Okay, so the GoPro 8 is still a really great camera. However, the GoPro 11 has 5.3K, it can shoot 4K 60 in 8 by 7 aspect ratio, and it can do 120 frames per second in 4K. But my biggest issue with the GoPro 8 is that permanent lens. You can't remove it, and so if it gets broken or damaged, there's no way to replace it. And also, I like the ability to just be able to twist on any ND filter I want, depending on the exposure. But overall, the GoPro 8 is still a really nice camera, and you could honestly save yourself quite a bit of money by picking up one you used. Okay, so a common problem with the GoPro 11 seems to be this white streak that you get when you're filming in sunny locations or any sort of bright light locations. And it's obviously caused by some sort of grease or oil from the factory because a lot of cameras have this. Now, fortunately, the fix is pretty easy. What you do is you just take off the outer lens and you want to clean the inner lens on the GoPro camera. So we're going to use a microfiber cloth and we're just going to very carefully clean the lens until we get that grease off. Now, an easy way to tell if you fixed it is by using a LED flashlight or some sort of bright light like you can see here in this video but fixing that's really going to allow you to get better shots especially if you're filming in bright locations and it would be a shame to ruin some good footage for a simple problem such as this. Okay so which camera is the best for you? Well, if you do a lot of vertically cropped social media, if you like that 360 degree stabilization, the new modes like the light painting, the star trails, the vehicle lights, if that stuff's really, really interesting to you, then you definitely want to go with the GoPro 11. Now I should mention there's another huge feature with the GoPro 11 that I did not mention in this video, and that's 10 bit color. Now the reason I didn't cover it is because I tried and tried and tried, but couldn't really find any good examples of how much better it is over 8 bit color. Now I am going to do a follow-up video on 10-bit color and we're going to push the color grading to see if we can really get some good advantages or not. Now if none of these features are really that important to you then you can actually just stick with your current camera or buy an older model and save a few bucks because honestly even the GoPro 8 performs really really well. However at this moment I would say don't buy any camera and that's because the GoPro 12 is set to release very very soon and it's rumored to have a one-inch sensor. Now whether that's true or not is still unclear but I think it's worth waiting because there might also be some sensors on existing cameras. Well, we covered a lot in this video and we're gonna wrap it up right now, but stay tuned because I'll be doing some more follow-ups as well as a review on the new GoPro 12. So that's gonna be pretty exciting, but until next time, guys, keep shooting. See ya.